Hello, thank you for joining me. So this is our video number five in our series, Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing. And in this video, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about datums. Datums are virtual measuring surfaces. And if you think about it, um, you know, we can essentially measure from uh, the different size of our object and uh, take our measurements from there. When it comes to geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, uh, we kind of consider these as being virtual surfaces. For instance, we have one of these out just outside of our machine shop. Uh, it's a granite tabletop, which is uh, you know very flat and a, a, a decent surface to measure from. And in fact, it's designed to be that way. It's designed to put our measuring tools on top of that in order to measure our um, our elements. And typically, you do have a data mayor like that where you do make your measurements from. And it's something you might want to do when you're inspecting uh, fabricated elements, machined elements, uh, parts, and whatnot. We're going to make sure that they are within the tolerance that you specify, and that's how you measure them. So you don't necessarily measure them from the bottom of the object, but you take your object at the very least and put it on a very flat surface, a table, and you measure from there. So that's your datum A. Typically that is your datum A, and then your datum B would be like maybe another perfectly uh, perpendicular surface. And you would take uh, this object and put it up against, and eventually datum C would define uh, the third surface. These two surfaces here in a measuring environment, especially in the digital age that we live in right now, may not uh, may not be uh, existent. They might be defined by a virtual point where you would have a, perhaps a laser guide or some sort of mechanical guide that would define a plane off of a, you know, they would be perpendicular to this, but it would be kind of a virtual plane. It would be measuring from that. But for this example, we're going to do something that's a little bit more physical. So what we've done is we've taken our block and our hole and our pin and put that into uh, into this uh, assembly. Well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and start from the beginning and show you how these datums work. So what I've done is i created a table. On the bottom of the table I have, uh, it's, uh, I have three points that can be defined to our first datum. And if you think about this, when you go to your uh, first datum you want to put your object down there, it may not necessarily be a perfectly flat object. That object is defined off of datum A by these, by three points. It's just like a three-legged uh, three stool, even a four-legged stool. With a four-legged stool, if it's rigid enough, really only three legs of that stool are on the floor at any one time. So we're going to use a three-legged stool as an example to do this. So in regard to data A, if you want to establish the, your first datum, the first datum uh, will touch your object in three points. And we're going to find those three points by the three endpoints at the end of our leg. The second datum, datum B, we're going to define that by two points. And datum C is going to be defined by one point. So if you think about this, it's kind of like the degrees of freedom we were talking about in class. Uh, right now, our object has got a full, uh, it's got a full ability to rotate and translate about uh, each one of the axes, the x, y, and z axis. And as we fully define this, it becomes less and less flexible, and we begin to define this a little bit more in the assembly, so that the degrees of freedom are restricted completely. And that's what we're going to do when we fully define this to our datum A, B, and C. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these three. In fact, let's just do this one at a time. We'll take one leg at a time and go to our datum and go to mate. And it puts that leg down there. And we'll go to the green check mark. And now you see that it, it, it is limited. That one leg is on there, but the two other legs aren't. And it does have the ability to rotate and uh, translate about all the axes. Except it cannot translate about the y axis, at least not for very far. So we're going to do that uh, the very same method for the, for the next two. And typically it's not a good idea to, uh, to define a mate relationship using a point, but this is just descriptive right now. It kind of shows you how we're going to define this to our datums A, B, and C. So again, we're going to go to mate. We're going to put our second ta table leg down. And now we do have uh, s uh, some more limitations with regard to our uh, ability to move. We have a, uh, a combination of uh, ac or axial rotation about the x and y axis, but it can't uh, translate about the z, and uh, we're going to continue to lock this up. So let's take our last one and mate that. And now uh, it cannot translate about the, the y axis completely now, nor can it rotate about the z axis or x axis, but it does have the ability to translate about uh, the x and the Z, just not the Y. So, if we click on this point in datum B and put that together, it does have the ability to rotate a little bit about the Y axis. 
I'm going to take that point and put that on datum B. And so the concept that we're trying to get out of this is it takes three points to attach your object on datum A, two points to attach it to your datum B, your second datum, and your third datum, your third virtual surface, can be defined simply by one point. And when we define that, go to the green check mark. If we try to move our table, it cannot be moved. It's fully defined, and now it's fully defined to our datums that we want to use to measure from. Okay, those are our datums. Let's go to our drawing and take a look at that and see how these datums translate to our drawings. So this is very similar to the drawing we just looked at. We do have our uh, cylindricity uh, uh, tolerance that we have up here with a different value on that. Uh, we've gotten rid of our flatness tolerance, but now we're going to put in our perpendicularity tolerance. Now let's go back and read this a little bit more and see what that says. What we've done is we've defined an axis in the middle of the, of the cylinder. And what that axis, uh, what this feature control frame uh, describes in that axis is that that axis needs to be perpendicular to datum A with a tolerance of 10 thousandths of an inch at the most material condition, which means that hole is going to be at its smallest in reference to datum A. So now we have a reference down here, and this is our datum uh, reference. Let's start with our datums and put in a datum. We'll go ahead and delete that. This is an annotation. It's a datum feature right under uh, geometric tolerance, and it's very similar to some of the other features or uh, some of the other elements we put in SOLIDWORKS, uh, like sections and detail views. We want to type in the value in here if you want to start from that value, so we're going to make that A. And what you want to do is click on essentially the surface of your part that's going to be touching the surface that we're going to be measuring from and then just drag it out. You want to be consistent in regard to the height and you notice that when we already put in uh, datum A it's going to give us datum B and so on and so forth. We can continue to define that as we go. But you want to make sure just like with uh, other elements we put in here, annotations we put into our drawing, that they're consistent from one annotation to the other. So we're going to do escape and get out of that. We do have our data made described. Let's go to our future control frame and rebuild this. Let's take that and delete that. Go to our future control frame, which is called geometric tolerance in our command manager. Our symbol is going to be perpendicularity, or perpendicular. Tolerance, we're going to put in uh, 0 0.010. And this time we're going to put in the most material condition. So it's uh, along this bar up here of our selections up here. We have most, we have least, we have regardless of future size and some other ones down here. But uh, we're going to, because it's just a basic introduction to GDNT, we're just going to do some of the basics. So we're going to go to M up here. And then we're going to define our primary datum. And that is going to be A. So type in capital A. And before we go to OK, again, you want to make sure you click on the surface we want to use. It's not going to be that, by the way. We put our flatness on that, but we do want to define as close as we can uh, that center line. That would define uh, the axis of our cylinder. We can conceivably put it on the side over here. It doesn't necessarily have to be the axis of the cylinder. It could be the cylinder surface itself. So either way, go to OK. takes us out of that command. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. You notice that this one didn't really attach itself to that line. But this one does. So when, when you put in these feature control frames, it's looking for a, an edge or a surface of the, of the object or the part that we're trying to put that uh, feature control frame on. So either one of these would be acceptable. And that's kind of how you do it. Let's go ahead and read this one. What this says is that the position of this hole in reference to this dimension. So what we have up here is a feature control frame that doesn't have a leader to it, but is connected to this dimension. What it says is that the position of this hole can vary by three thousandths of an inch at the most material condition, which means that hole is going to be at its uh, at its uh, smallest. In regard to uh, in reference to uh, datum B and C. So what it's saying is that that hole can vary by three thousandths of an inch up and down in reference to datum B, or left or right in regard to uh, reference uh, datum reference C. So let's go ahead and put that one in. Let's go ahead and delete that. Go to our geometric tolerance. 
Let's pick out our uh, position symbol. A tolerance of uh, 0 0.003 thousandths of an inch at the most material condition in reference to our primary datum, which is going to be B, and our secondary datum, which is going to be C. And if you just do the green chalk marker like what I did, it just arbitrarily drops it in here. It just drops it and beats it. And gets out of here. So let's go ahead and uh, put that close to our dimension up here. And what that does is it kind of puts it closely, closer to that dimension. And uh, when you move that dimension around, you're going to have to move your future control frame around too. So that's uh, what I wanted to show you in this film in regard to uh, datums. Not only a description of datums, about how they work, how they integrate into the drawing and future control frames that have reference to those datums. With these uh, references, with these datums and uh, the future control frames that define the 3D feature in our part, that pretty much wraps up our geometric uh, dimension and tolerance. And so what you need to do for your assignment this week is you need to have some sort of element, uh, some sort of attachment hole, uh, some sort of pin, or some other reference that uh, is going to provide a mating surface between parts in your assembly and define that into a drawing and I'll have more details on that in just a bit.